First tonight, people throughout Utah are still talking about that space visitor that lit up the sky early this morning. You see uh, a meteor of this size or this uh, sort of majesty only once every maybe five years or so. Today we've been learning about the science of that rock, that meteor that briefly turned night into day over the western United States. Alex Cabrero is in Salt Lake City. Alex, you spoke with professors at the University of Utah's Astronomy Department. What are they saying about this meteor? Well, Dini, they're all saying they wish they had seen it with their own eyes, but we do have several video clips of the meteor if you haven't seen it. Of course, the one question everybody has, did it land on the ground? We spoke with several experts who say there's a pretty good chance that it did. In fact, one expert gave us an idea of where it might be, and here's a hint, Utah. 911, what is the address to your emergency? Calls came from everywhere, Ogden. Uh, I'm currently driving, but I just saw a giant blue flash in the sky, and it came down into the city. Bountiful. It flashed from the west and lit up the whole freaking neighborhood. Salt Lake City. Ma'am, I am not kidding you. I am terrified. I mean, Professor David. It's an, it's an amazing, you know, astronomical phenomenon. Ida is the chair of the University of Utah's astronomy department. He says the energy of the meteor coming into Earth's atmosphere was so powerful, it had um, to be measured in terawatts. Happened. It's almost like the consumption of the United States all at once. But it was only a, it was a fraction of a second. Those who saw it believe it. It looked like a big fireball. It was like daylight. Uh, I've never seen it before. Kita says a meteor like that comes along once every five years. A camera at the University of Utah's Frisco Peak Observatory near Milford caught it, then got the aftershock rumble a few seconds later. Seismology monitors at the U picked up the rumble from the air. It's breaking the sound barrier, and so it is creating sonic booms, you know, shock waves. Seth Jarvis, Clark Planetarium's director, says the meteor was about the size of a washing machine, then vaporized, breaking apart on impact. However, he says there's a good chance some of it landed. And because of all the cameras which recorded it, you can get a good idea of where it may have landed, if it landed. You can time the length of the shadow, the direction of the shadow, the duration of it, and using trigonometry, calculate where in the sky, relative to that camera, that source of light was. Which leads to... It's possible that it's somewhere out in, like, West Desert, somewhere around there. But trust me, I mean, you, you go out there and you wander around. There's rocks on the ground all the time. Now, there is a lot of interest in finding that rock if it did land already. I've received emails from meteorite hunters in Kansas and Nebraska and in Florida asking me if I knew the coordinates or even the azimuth readings of the meteor's trajectory. There is a lot of money there, those meteorites. If you find them, they are worth some money, and it seems like the race to find it, if it's there, it's already on. Bruce Help you're up on your trigonometry, Alex. <laughs> no clue. Thanks. <laughs>